Is Jaden Daniels not getting enough pre-NFL draft love? Like, could Jaden Daniels be taken as high as number two overall in the 2024 NFL draft? You are Locked On LSU, your daily podcast on the LSU Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what's up, y'all? Welcome into Locked On LSU. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. But also don't forget, if you're one of those, if you're an everydayer that listens to the podcast on your preferred podcast platform, first and foremost, thank you for always being here and thank you for being back again today. But just a reminder, you can also check us out on YouTube as well. Just search Locked On LSU in the search bar. Hit that subscribe button and you'll get notified as soon as new podcasts episodes drop and you'll get up-to-date information about the latest in terms of LSU football, baseball, basketball, softball, so on and so forth. The latest with the LSU Tigers. All right, let's get into it. Today's edition of Locked on LSU was brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. So visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on today to get started. So we are officially getting into the NFL offseason. Today, February 20th, is the very first day that teams can start tagging players. That, that you know, It's no longer tampering. That if a GM or coach around the league wants to pick up and call the phone to a free agent, that is officially a go today. That we are only a few days away from the NFL combine. We're about two months away from the NFL draft. That we are getting in the nitty gritty of free agency and draft and building rosters time of year. And if you love football as as much as I love football, you know that you're just starving for any sort of football content. Even if it's mock drafts, even if it's talking heads, giving their evaluation or their hot takes of what this upcoming draft class might be, who's the best player in this upcoming free agency class, who's the best competition for the Chiefs next year. You know, of course, it's it's talking season as much as it is roster season. It's also NFL draft talking season, the time of year when the Daniel Jeremiah's and the Mel Kuyper's and the, you know, the the NFL draft gurus across the sport and across sports media come out with their mock drafts and their official evaluation of players. Now, you and I both know this is such an inexact science that there are a lot of people that make a lot of money and make millions and millions of dollars and their jobs are to find the next great quarterback. Their jobs are to find the next great playmakers and game changers and the next best players for their franchises. And even though they make so much money, and even though they spend all of that time, early mornings, late nights, weekends, holidays, whatever it might be, all this time they spend watching film and breaking down evaluations, it's still in in exact science. We still don't really have a formula for success in the NFL. Look at Brock Purdy, his last pick taken in the draft, and he was quarterbacking in the Super Bowl this past year. Weird things happen. Evaluations are never 100%. But I think that this year, in terms of the NFL draft talk, it's a lot more interesting this season for us as LSU fans since Jaden Daniels will likely be a top five, top ten pick. Malik Neighbors the same. Where Brian Thomas falls, that'll be interesting to follow as well. But you have two players, three really, but specifically two from this high-powered, high-flying, high-octane, high-scoring offense you had this past year in Jaden Daniels and Malik Neighbors that are likely to each go top 10. Now, again, like I said, everyone has their own opinion. And it's easy for us, you know, myself as a media member and these other national talking heads on ESPN and Fox Sports and CBS Sports, they all do fantastic work. But their opinion is is just as good as anyone else's. Their evaluation is just as good as anyone else's. This truly is a time will tell, we shall see kind of business. But I still think it's, an, it's important. And I still think it's valuable to hear the evaluations of this quarterback going there, this offensive lineman going there, especially as it pertains to Jaden Daniels. This is an interesting quarterback class. 
Caleb Williams is considered to be widely considered, pretty much unanimously considered to be the best quarterback in this draft and will likely be the first overall pick if Chicago decides to stay with the first overall pick, which I believe that they will. Caleb Williams will be a Chicago Bear. And then you have the second tier of quarterbacks, more of uh, question marks. What are they in the NFL? Are they starting caliber NFL quarterbacks? Michael Penix Jr., Bo Nix, J.J. McCarthy from Michigan. And then you've also got in that top tier, Drake May from North Carolina, and Jaden Daniels finds himself in that rank as well. And I don't know where Jaden Daniels was projected to go in the NFL draft going into this season. I can't imagine it was incredibly high, but Jaden Daniels' stock over the last really, I guess, month, month and a half of the season, his stock skyrocketed. And it only continues to rise. Lewis Riddick of ESPN, who I think, honestly, has the credentials to be a general manager across the NFL, gave his evaluation of Jaden Daniels, where he thinks Jaden Daniels deserves to be when we rank the hierarchy of the quarterbacks in this upcoming NFL draft. This is Lewis Riddick on ESPN. Yeah, look, I mean, for me, I don't, I never had any question from the get-go when I started watching these quarterbacks as to who number two was. Jaden Daniels, for me, is clearly number two. Mm. And I think as we move through this process, I know there are going to be people who say, well, you know, Drake May, once he gets into the interviews and all, you know, people are going to become wild with him. Well, I think people are going to be very impressed with Jaden Daniels as well as we move through the draft process. Because remember, this is the time of year where things can get a little sideways. Because there's no football being played now. <laughs> there's no football being played. But you, and you can wind up tricking yourself into thinking things that you shouldn't be thinking about. As long as Jaden Daniels doesn't do anything to hurt himself, I think, in this pre-draft process, and as long as people are comfortable with ultimately what his verifieds are as far as his height and his weight and his hand size and what he looks like. And I've said, I want to see Jaden Daniels in person. I want to stand next to him just like I stood next to Bryce Young last year and stood next to C.J. Stroud in consecutive days. And that's why, for me, it was a slam dunk. It's C.J. Stroud for me. I want to see Jaden Daniels because I'll tell you this right now. The way this young man operates in the pocket, the way in which he can get that ball out and speed up his release and the way he sees the field, some of the touch throws he makes are sick. I'm going to take that and consider the context and say that when Lewis Riddick says that those are some sick throws and plays that he makes, I'm going to say he means in a good way. Glowing words. A glowing evaluation from Lewis Riddick of Jaden Daniels. And I don't disagree with any of it. And it begged the question to me, why aren't we hearing more about Jaden Daniels as a pro quarterback prospect? I know that he's expected to be a top 10 pick, top five pick, top three quarterback taken in this year's draft. But I feel like so much of the conversation has been dominated by Caleb Williams and Drake May. I, li- I, I do sports talk radio in an NFL town. I talk to national NFL insiders every day, every week on my show, and it's always Caleb Williams or Drake May. Where I've heard from some NFL insiders and former NFL quarterbacks, Drake May is the most complete prospect that I've ever seen. I've seen from some NFL evaluators, you know, look, Caleb Williams, he's the next Patrick Mahomes. And if that really is true, then every other team in the league needs to watch out because, my goodness, the last thing – that 31 other teams in the NFL can afford is not just one Patrick Mahomes, but two Patrick Mahomes. But again, it's an inexact science, and we don't know. But I've wondered, why aren't we hearing more about Jaden Daniels? Why aren't we hearing more than just Lewis Riddick? And if I missed it, then that's on me. Why aren't we hearing from more evaluators other than Lewis Riddick of, yeah, Jaden Daniels can be the number number two pick in the draft. Where so many mock drafts that I've seen is Caleb Williams one, Drake May two. Sometimes it's Jaden Daniels three at New England. Some mock drafts have Jaden Daniels going as late as six to the Giants. And look, the sixth overall pick in the draft is nothing to scoff at. But I do wonder, from the national media perspective, where is the pause and where is the hesitation as far as Jaden Daniels is concerned? And why doesn't he get more I don't know, number one overall pick kind of hype. Number two overall pick kind of hype that maybe a Drake May is. I understand the Caleb Williams hype. I get it. I understand. But 
I feel like there have been so few national talking heads and insiders and evaluators who have spoken as glowingly about Jaden Daniels, really spoken about Jaden Daniels as a prospect at all, as much as we've heard from Lewis Riddick right there. But as far as Jaden Daniels as a pro prospect, a quarterback success, and we've seen this several times throughout the history of the NFL, a lot of the quarterback success is based upon the situation that they're going into. Roster, coaching, coordinator, so on and so forth. What needs to happen for Jaden Daniels to have success at the next level? We'll get into that coming up next after just a few words from our sponsors. I want to tell you about FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your bet wins. Plus, you can bet on all of your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and there is so much more. That's one thing that I love about FanDuel is there is such a wide variety of different bets, props, and parlays that you can put your money on. It's not just money line. It's not just the spread. There is so much that you can get in on the action with. So just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. Again, that is fanduel.com slash locked on and new FanDuel customers will get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. FanDuel official sports book partner of the NBA. All right, rolling along here, Locked on LSU. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, we are part of the Locked on Network, your team every single day. Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every single league. So find Locked On Sports Today right now, and it's available on the free Fire TV channels app. All right, rolling along here, Locked On LSU. Jaden Daniels is a pro prospect. We heard from Lewis Riddick, the uh, ESPN NFL analyst, in the last segment. He said, look, I think Jaden Daniels is the second-best quarterback in this draft which I feel like the consensus, and you'll you'll have outliers here and there, I feel like the consensus of mock drafters, talent evaluators is Caleb Williams 1, Drake May 2, Jaden Daniels 3. Why that is, I don't know. I truly don't know why. And I think it's because we just simply haven't heard enough advocating and bloviating over Jaden Daniels. And I think that it's advocating and bloviating that's warranted that Jaden Daniels is an incredibly special talent. And I understand those who have pause with Jaden Daniels, but I also think that more prospects than not, more quarterbacks than not, have a lot of those question marks. I'll go back to the, the draft last season. It was a heavy, heavy quarterback draft. Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, Anthony Richardson, Will Levis. All four of those quarterbacks, I'll throw Hunt and Hooker into the mix as well. All of those quarterbacks have their question marks. Every single one of them. None of them were a perfect prospect. Very rarely do you have a Joe Burrow that comes around or a Trevor Lawrence that comes around. A consensus, hands down, no questions asked, number one overall pick. A game-changing, franchise-altering kind of quarterback. Doesn't come around very often. Because if they did, then everyone would have one. I don't know if you've watched the NFL recently. Not everyone has one. So, you know, Bryce Young, it was the size. CJ Stroud, it was the S2 cognition score, which was like horrible. Will Levis, it was the turnovers. Anthony Richardson, it was the completion percentage. Is he ready for the NFL? Questions for all of those prospects. I have those same kind of questions with these prospects this season. And Jaden Daniels is no different. Caleb Williams, I, I got a question how much he really loves football. I do a, a local show with a former NFL player, and he always says, do you love football or do you love what football does for you? 
frankly, I don't know if I can answer that question as far as Caleb Williams is concerned. Drake May, we've heard so many great things about Drake May, but does he have the physicality and the athleticism to add that second layer to the off, to your offense that NFL offenses, frankly, need these days? Jaden Daniels, I think it's probably the size, that he's a skinny little thing. You're concerned about him being able to stay injury-free in an NFL that is that is designed defensively to get after the quarterback. All very fair questions. But I do think in order for, for Jaden Daniels to really realize his potential at the next level, there's one thing that is so incredibly key. And this isn't just a Jaden Daniels thing. How many times have we seen quarterbacks that were highly coveted and highly drafted and they really fizzled out and kind of became busts, maybe because of what they did themselves, but also because of the situation that was around them. I think Baker Mayfield is a really good example of that. That Baker Mayfield was drafted by the Cleveland Browns first overall, and Baker Mayfield was supposed to be the savior for a franchise that really, for the majority of its existence, has just been miserable. Miserable. Baker Mayfield had a couple good years, but it was a revolving door at head coach. It was a revolving door at offensive coordinator. How do you expect a young quarterback to be able to thrive in that kind of situation? And that's just one example of so many examples throughout the years within the NFL of quarterbacks that were drafted first overall, top three, top five, top 10. And they came into a situation that was not competent, frankly. You go into a franchise that is tumultuous. It almost happened to Trevor Lawrence. Remember Trevor Lawrence rookie season when Urban Meyer was the head coach and then Urban Meyer got caught, you know, sticking his fingers in a girl's pants at a bar. It was a story that came out that he was kicking the kicker, like just total, total train wreck. They fired uh, Urban Meyer. They hired Doug Peterson. Seems like it's going to be all right. And Jaden Daniels is no different, but I do think the key for Jaden Daniels for him to really succeed at this next level is to get a head coach and an offensive coordinator and a coaching staff in general that doesn't want to stymie his legs. It's a coach and an offensive coordinator that doesn't take Superman's cape away. What is the difference between Jaden Daniels as a pro prospect now versus Jaden Daniels as a pro prospect coming into this season, coming into this past season? Well, it's his deep ball ability. It's his massive arm that he proved to me and to you and to the rest of the world. Hey, look, now this guy's got an absolute cannon of an arm. This guy can launch it 40 or 50 yards downfield. He's got big playability with his arm and with his legs. That's what makes Jaden Daniels so good is that he's slippery. He can fit into tight uh, into tight spaces that he can turn a what's supposed to be maybe a two-yard loss into a 15-yard gain with his legs. So it's not just the arm. It's also his legs. I understand that there are a lot of GMs, OCs, head coaches in the NFL that get really nervous about that because once a quarterback takes off, he's much more susceptible to injury. Once you get out of the pocket, hey, you're fair game. If I'm a GM, if I'm an OC, if I'm a head coach, I understand the hesitation for subjecting your franchise's greatest asset in a first-round quarterback to injury, especially one that's tall and skinny, like Jaden Daniels is. So I, I understand it. I get it. But Jaden Daniels, I do not believe, will reach his full potential in the NFL nor do I believe that he will thrive and win in the NFL if he walks into a situation where he's forced into the pocket. I don't know why there would be a single GM across America that would draft Jaden Daniels without the intention of his legs and his arms being an asset. That you can't take away what makes him so great even out of fear of injury, even out of fear of what might happen to our first-round quarterback. Now, I would like to believe that every GM, OC, head coach is, is probably on board with that. But we've seen so many head coaches and offensive coordinators throughout the years in the National Football League, in college level as well, football in general, not always putting quarterbacks 
in the most opportune situation. It's one thing that Brian Kelly said uh, going into this season. He said, look, we've got a quarterback that can do really great things. We also have, have a quarterback that needs to improve with things. We have a quarterback that's really good with running the football, but our quarterback needs to be better throwing the football, needs to be able to make a few more risks, needs to be able to create big plays with his arm. So we have to develop that without taking away what makes him so great. And look what Jaden Daniels became. He won the Heisman Trophy just a few months later. So I think that whoever drafts Jaden Daniels needs to have that same approach. All right, coming up next, there is something that I've heard in just the first weekend of college baseball, and it drives me absolutely bonkers. And I don't want to hear any of it. I'm tired of it already. And we're only in the first weekend. I'll explain coming up next after just a few words from our sponsors. All right. I want to tell you about LinkedIn jobs. So when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have got to check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. So the company that I work for, the radio station that I work for, we were looking for a producer. We had a producer quit in the middle of football season. We're like, look, it's it's the, the busiest season of the year. We need to fill this role quickly. And also we can't really break the bank uh, when we want to, to hire this next producer. So we went to LinkedIn jobs. Why did we do that? Because LinkedIn's not just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals that you cannot find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all of that while making the process easy and intuitive. And I know what you're saying. Easy. Yeah, right. Hiring is never easy. But with LinkedIn jobs, when you have that many quality candidates, it makes the hiring process that much easier. It's so easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on locked on college. Excuse me. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. All right, rolling along here, locked on LSU. The first weekend of college baseball is behind us and it is so great to finally have college baseball back I know that I was excited for it. You were excited for it. And the first week of college baseball action absolutely did not disappoint. But there has been a narrative. um, There's been a narrative going on around college baseball. And it's only the first weekend. But it's already driving me absolutely bonkers. I'm tired of it. I don't want to hear it anymore. Chase Burns. Chase Burns was a pitcher at Tennessee over the last couple of years who transferred to Wake Forest this season. Chase Burns got the start on Saturday night for Wake Forest. He struck out 10, uh, allowed three hits, and walked just one. Shut him out in six innings. I believe it was Illinois. Wake Forest was playing Illinois. 10 strikeouts, three hits, one walk, zero runs given up. Chase Burns is a really good player. It's probably a name that you recognize from LSU playing Tennessee over the last couple of seasons. He's a great player. He's a great pitcher. And I think he'll probably be a a first-round prospect whenever he enters the MLB draft. The narrative that I'm hearing is, is Chase Burns the next Paul Skeens? I understand that this is like a natural thing that we all are guilty of in sports. We always want to find the next great one. Whenever teams win championships, we always want to talk about the next one. Like after the Super Bowl, for example, what was one of the first things that Patrick Mahomes said after winning his third Super Bowl? Well, we're going to get the fourth. Let's three-peat next year. It's always about what's next. It's always about, okay, who's the next GOAT? Once Tom Brady retires, who's the GOAT now? Once LeBron James retires, who's the best in the NBA? We always, always want to compare to the great ones. We always, always want to, you know, recreate 
the greatness that we may have seen. Tiger Woods is another one. Who's the next Tiger Woods? It's the same thing that we get with LSU 2019 comparisons. Like, I'm tired of that. I'm sick of that. No team is going to be that team. That's what made that team so special. Why can't we just enjoy good things? Why did the next year, did it have to be 2020 Alabama versus 2019 LSU? Why did two seasons ago, why did it have to be, is 2022 Tennessee the new 2019 LSU? Who would win, 2023 LSU or 2019 LSU? Why do we always have to do that? It's exhausting. Why can't we just enjoy good things without constantly comparing them to the best? Like I've seen it with Jack Caglione, the pitcher, you know, two-way player at Florida. Call him Shohei Otani. He's not Shohei Otani. Enough. Enough of that. It's ridiculous comparison. Paul Skeens is a one in a once in a generation kind of player. LSU has never seen a pitcher like that since Ben McDonald. I don't think college baseball has ever seen a pitcher like Paul Skeens. Ever. So you think that you're just going to get another one the next year? No, it's ridiculous. Enough of the comparisons. Paul Skeens was special. He was different. There's a reason why he was the number one pick in the Major League Baseball draft. Can't we just enjoy getting to watch Paul Skeens? Can't we enjoy watching what Chase Burns is going to do at Wake Forest this year without constantly comparing him to one of the best college pitchers of all time in Paul Skeens? And also, before we start the comparisons, can we maybe ask him to do just a little bit more? Like he had a good outing on Saturday, a great outing. A fantastic outing on Saturday. This is not a Chase Burns hate podcast. He had one good game. Paul Skeen's never had a bad one in an LSU uniform. So let's go ahead and let Chase Burns do a little bit more before we start having that conversation. And maybe can we just stop having that conversation altogether? It's natural. I get it. We're sports fans. We do this. But I'm tired of it. Can't we just let the best be the best and everything else just fall into place? That's what I did right here on the podcast. We're going to say no more LSU 2019 comparisons. No more Paul Skeens comparisons. Done with it. Tired of it. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. All right, that's going to do it for me today. Thank you for making Locked On LSU your first to listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. We'll continue the conversation coming up next on tomorrow's edition of Locked On LSU. We'll also get into some of your questions on a Mailbag Wednesday. So make sure to send those questions in. You can comment them below on YouTube or you can tweet them in at Caroline Fenton one or at Locked On LSU.